Uh, thank you both for the film. I'd like to start with a question and then I'm just going to um, give the microphone around. Tell us more of the context of how you got to, to follow the story, what you were expecting and what you, um, the final project was. Sure. Well, we, we found out about the story of that dragon cancer through a website called Kill Screen Daily, which is, uh, some of you might be familiar with it, but it's sort of an art-focused gaming news website. And I just read a, a brief two-sentence blurb uh, about what Ryan was doing, and this was very early on in the development process of that dragon cancer. And at that point, they only really had just one demo scene that they'd taken to the GDC, the Indian Developers Conference. Um, I believe this was 2012, uh, April of 2012. And uh, so we reached out uh, just because it seemed like an interesting story. The, the idea of making a video game about something like this wasn't something that uh, had occurred to us as something that one would do uh, in the first place. We weren't terribly familiar with the independent gaming world at that point. And it just seemed like a very interesting idea, not just in terms of what making that game would be like, but what the game itself would be, uh, how it would look, how it would feel, how people would play it and interact with it. Uh, and that was kind of the genesis of the of the idea of making the film. We thought it would be a sort of a short film, maybe like a ten minute short at first. And so we went out to Colorado, where the Green family lives, and spent four days with them filming, kind of thinking that that it would be the basis of a of a short essentially, and maybe one more shoot after that. But it, it very quickly turned into something much more because. As you can tell, they're, they're so open with us. And then we went to PAX, the game conference in Seattle, um, for our second shoot. And that really is where everything else uh, started changing. We were seeing the reaction that people had to the video game. And uh, Ryan having that experience of sharing the game while Joel's health was beginning to start declining. Uh, that, that's when I think we realized how special the story was and when it, when it really became a feature film. My question just has to do with the relationship between you guys and Ryan. So, um, I mean, there's an interesting dynamic that, you know, we follow him designing the game and working with his team. So how closely, like, when you think about what you're doing with the film, how closely were you working with him on sort of the idea of the film, in a sense? Like, is that, is that clear? Yeah. Um, what? Well, Everyone can hear me okay, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's in, in some ways, um, there were some really interesting ways in which um, we actually worked really closely with Ryan and Amy and with the rest of the development team on the game, um, which I think was a really kind of special experience for us because um, so often in, in the films we've made in the past, um, they the, the intimate nature of them does require a lot of kind of collaboration and, and close work with the people we're filming with, but um, in this case it was especially unique because we were documenting their artwork and, and not only documenting the creation of the artwork, but also, you know, wanted um, to, as kind of visual people, wanted to be thinking of original and interesting ways to represent the video game in the film um, and to represent the kind of process of creating it, especially because there are some ways in which developing a video game isn't very visually interesting because so much of it is coding. Um, so yeah, there were actually kind of a bunch of examples in which we um, were collaborating. Um, you know, and sometimes that would be also to do with the fact that we were um, both teams, the film team and the game team, uh, at some points were involved in documenting the same thing in some ways. Um, and at the same time, so the video game was being developed as we were um, filming, so the video game was documenting their experiences with Joel at the same time that we were documenting their experiences with Joel, although obviously we had the added layer of documenting the creation of the game as well. So yeah, there were a bunch of examples um, and situations where we filmed once we filmed a scene and then they, the lake scene for example, when the family's feeding ducks by the lake, we filmed that with the family um, and they subsequently contacted us, um, and uh, you know, while we were, you know, during the period of our filming with them, but they asked us if they could use the audio from our filming with them as temporary audio while they were developing their own late scene 
uh, where they were feeding the ducks in the game. So there were a bunch of examples like that where we asked them for content or for help in order to film certain scenes, or they asked us for content or help in order to create scenes in the game. Um, and that, I think, was a really kind of interesting and very kind of creative collaboration um, that I, I think we didn't necessarily anticipate going into. Did the family ever show any, like, reluctance at the beginning um, towards, like, sharing their story with you? And then also, how did your relationship with the family grow as filming went on? There wasn't as much reluctance as you'd imagine at first. I mean, typically, I think when you're when you're when you're filming a documentary and you're and you're inviting you know people into you know into the world to be uh, in your film, uh, they'll typically if you have to convince them, then it's usually not going to work. But it's typical that you know someone's going to appear in a documentary for something that they want to say and or something that they want to share and. Ryan and Amy were very much in that situation of wanting to, you know, share this project with people and share their son with people, and uh, it was it was actually a very uh, a very organic experience to be filming with them because they they wanted us there. I think our presence as filmmakers there served not just a, a creative purpose for for them, as as Malika was outlining in terms of the ways that we work together, but also served a purpose in the sense that uh, our our presence was another another, you know, viewer uh, for Joel and for their family. It was kind of another camera, as, as Ryan says for, towards the end of the film, it's like another way to have a camera focused on, on Joel and their, and their experience. And I think that that kind of filled a valuable need for, for them uh, in this period when it felt like they were so alone and dealing with this, this, this very difficult thing. Um, I think having us there uh, was, was helpful in that sense. And um, yeah, I mean, they, they never really asked us to the camera down. Uh, it was kind of up to us to draw that line in terms of what we wanted to film or didn't want to film. Typically, that line for us was showing Joel suffering. We didn't want to show that, and uh, that was uh, a decision, or, you know, artistically on our part, and, and, and just for our own emotional state on our on our part. But also, we took our lead from the game team pretty frequently. Like they they wanted, they were always very clear about in that dragon cancer. They didn't want to drag people through the mud necessarily, you know, it, it didn't seem necessary to their story um, in telling the story of Joel to show people the suffering that Joel experienced and they wanted to focus instead on the beauty of the experience and, and, on, the, and on the loss of the experience as well. They wanted to take the beauty out of those elements and, and share that and we wanted to do the same thing ultimately. So working, uh, Working with them, I say working with them, even though obviously the film is out of them. But but there, as Malik was saying, there was a large element of working with them, and there is a relationship that has to be formed when you're filming a story for you know almost a, almost two years, a year and a half with a family. Like you need to be able to get along, and I think that we were able to do that very well, in part because our our goals were so similar. The game itself, um, the dragon cancer, the family, the whole entire topic of cancer is pretty dense and heavy. What was the emotional process like for yourselves as you filmed this entire thing? Um, that, the, I, I couldn't hear everything, but if I was to correct the question was, what was the emotional process like for us to film the story? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, sorry. Um, yeah, it was, um, as you can probably imagine, incredibly difficult at, at times. Um, and, you know, like David said, uh, we were never asked to turn the camera off. And so, um, ultimately, we there were a number of times when we had to make a decision on whether or not to keep filming. Um, and, you know, whether some of those really, really hard times were important for us to document. And I think, um, you know, from the beginning, I think it had been really clear that Ryan and Amy had led us into their lives to film them through this process because they saw the documentary as an extension of um, and a continuation of their larger mission to actually talk about these experiences that people don't generally talk about very publicly. So, you know, the video game was one way for them to do that. They also had a blog. Um, that had a pretty significant following where they did that. And so I think, you know, the documentary, the reason they led us into their lives was because they saw the documentary in, in, in a similar way and as a crucial part of that process. Um, so there were definitely some times, I think, where um, we were really kind of 
uncomfortable and just so emotional and had you know so much difficulty dealing with what was happening but where we kind of felt a responsibility um, in some ways to keep filming because you know in some ways when we'd signed on to make this film um, we hadn't realized it back then um, but you know we realized that at the point that that Joel's health was really deteriorating we realized that we kind of had a responsibility to continue filming and document as much of that process as possible because that's what the whole the film was about in many ways um, and um, yeah so I think you know it, it was pretty tough for us both um, on top of all of that of course was the fact that um, you know when you're with people going through that kind of a situation um, it, it almost feels like you don't you don't want to you want to control how much of your emotion you're sharing with them or putting on them um, because you don't want them to feel obliged to be comforting you uh, while they're going through such a difficult situation. So there was also like a bit of a fine balance of kind of showing, obviously being kind of you know transparent with them about how much we would we were kind of how emotional we were about what was happening, but while also not making the situation about us in some ways. So I think there were certainly ways in which we kind of had to. Um, you know, deal with our emotions uh, about the, the situation kind of separately and outside of, um, you know, separately from Ryan and Amy so that we could allow them to continue with what they were doing. So it was, it, I, it meant, I think it was a really unusual filming experience, but um, yeah, we were so thankful um, that Ryan and Amy were kind of at, so invested in the film that they allowed us to keep filming through that. Yeah, we, we frequently wanted to give them space, um, not realizing that they never needed space from us. We, we were a part of their experience. We were, uh, you know, by, by being able to film, we were a part of this, of, of, you know, being able to witness what they were going through. And uh, there were multiple sh uh, shoots that we weren't quite sure we were going to go out and do because we didn't feel like it was the right time to approach them and say, hey, are is it all right if we come out? Uh, when we were in Cali that shoot in California that we did when Joel was in a clinical trial, that wasn't something that we initially, you know, felt comfortable going out to, to go get, but um, we kind of just had to rely on, on a very honest communication and a very frank communication in between them and us. Um, we, you know, we would say like, you know, we know that this must be a very difficult time. Uh, we'd love to be there with you during it. Um, and they, they would, always say yes, you know, they would always say come out. Um, the one thing we, we didn't uh, want to film it was the funeral, uh, Joel's funeral. We wanted to just be there as friends um, and and we were fine with that decision uh, and I think they were too. I think ultimately there was a point when it just made sense that, that this was the context in which we would be present uh, and it was always that question in the back of our minds of, you know, what is the context in which we are going to be there? What what are we capturing by being there in this moment in California? What we're capturing in the last week of Joel's life? We obviously didn't realize it was the last week of Joel's life when we were filming. Um, but what are, what are we capturing at this moment? And it was always just to be in, in, in service to the same story that Brian and Amy were, were capturing by making their video game. Thank you. So after experiencing like a lot of the journey with them through their, that last year, um, how do you think the game represented that experience that you guys felt? The question was, uh, how does the game represent the experience of, of their lives? Yeah, just like how like playing the game after you made the film and went through this journey with them, um, how, how good of a job do you think it did like portraying the emotions that you guys felt? Um, that we felt uh, well. I mean, I think I think the game. Have, have any of you played the game? By the way, just out of curiosity, show of hands. Is anyone? Uh, I think uh, we we still to this day only play through parts of the final game. I think both Malik and I we've talked about it a little bit, and we're both kind of just trying to find the right time to sit down for the the full experience because the game itself takes about two hours to play. Um, and it's not necessarily a time commitment, it's more of an emotional commitment that I think we, we've been in the middle of distribution and such with the film and we've been busy with the projects and we haven't uh, been able to really 
dedicate ourselves emotionally to like sitting down and actually playing it through fully. But we've seen a lot of the game um, in its completed stage, and we've also seen so much of it as it's been developed for the last two years. And um, I think it's your question is interesting to me because it's it's a kind of a very subjective um, uh, point of view as to you know how well it captures it. I think that one of the beautiful things about the game is that it lets people bring into it what they want to bring into it. Um, it's very open ended in that way. There there's a lot of uh, conversation in the game between Ryan and himself and Ryan and his wife Amy. Uh, but a lot of what your takeaway from the game is, I think, is based on what you're bringing into it in terms of how you feel about grief and how you feel about, uh, you know, the idea of, of caring for someone who, you know, who you might lose. Uh, and so that I find to be very profound. And I think also I personally uh, feel as though I've lost my objectivity uh, when it comes to the game. You know, I, I, I feel like um, we, we were so enthralled by it from the very beginning and just looking at the concept art and up until this point I think I, I'm unable to separate how I feel about the game as a creative artwork versus how I know it's this uh, this, this labor of love from this family and from the huge team of people who worked on bringing the game to life who aren't Ryan and, and, and Amy, you know, like Josh, the co-creator of the game, and John, the composer, and Ryan Cousins, one of the animators. They all did such a phenomenal job, and it's this culmination of all of their visions. And um, yeah, I think for me, um, I, I, I'm so just happy for the Greens that they created something that they feel comfortable with, that they feel represents their experience well, that they feel is kind of a vessel for their love of Joel that is this kind of digital memorial, which is what they really wanted to make. Um, and I'm also just uh, so amazed that the critical response and the response from players has been as great as, as it has been. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry, that's a really long-winded answer, but um, I think that it kind of transcends um, how accurately I feel the game uh, captures uh, their experience because it, it for them it captures it.